Have you ever been on a hike? As you hit the trails, have you ever pondered on the difference in effort between climbing uphill and descending downhill? Which do you find more challenging? Well, you probably found it hard to make your way up the steep incline. Then the ease of moving downwards, right? That's because it takes more energy in that. That's exactly what's happening to the movement of molecules within a cell. Well, the movement of molecules from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. That means down the concentration is effortless and requires no energy. This is what we call passive transport. But what happens when molecules need to move against the flow from a low concentration to a high concentration? This uphill movement, much like pushing against a strong current, requires energy and is known as the active transport. Well, these transport mechanisms across the cell membrane are essential to regulate the concentration of substances inside the cell. These substances include ions such as calcium, sodium, potassium and chloride ion nutrients, including sugars, fatty acids, and amino acids, and waste products, particularly carbon dioxide, which must leave the cell. Now, you know the structure of cell membrane, right? If you don't, do watch our video on membrane structure and dynamics to make it more clear to you. Anyways, in cell membrane, the phospholipids are tightly packed together and the membrane has a hydrophobic interior. This structure causes the membrane to be selectively permeable. That means it allows the selective substances to pass through it, while providing a barrier to diffusion of ions and polar molecules, larger than about 150 Daltons. So, what do you think will happen if a material that is needed within the cell is prevented from passing through the cell membrane? How will it get through it? Yes, the passage of these molecules relies on specific transmembrane proteins. And these membrane transport proteins are highly specific and selective for ions and other larger molecules they transport across membranes. Well, these proteins controlling membrane permeability fall into three broad classes. These are pumps, carriers, and channels, each of them having distinct properties. Starting off with the membrane pumps, the word pump probably conjures up thoughts of using energy to pump up the tire of a bicycle or a basketball. Similarly, energy is required for these membrane proteins to transport substances, molecules or ions across the membrane, usually against their concentration gradients, that is, from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. These enzymes use energy from adenosine triphosphate or ATP, light, or rarely other sources. Well, pumps are also called 
primary active transporters. Now, you must be thinking what a primary active transport is. And if it is primary, then what would be the secondary active transport? Well, worry not, because we are here to answer this. So, active transport mechanisms are divided into two categories, primary active transport and secondary active transport. Primary active transport is the one that directly uses a source of energy, like ATP, to move molecules across a membrane against their gradient. While the secondary active transport does not need a direct source of energy. Instead, it uses an electrochemical gradient set up by the primary active transport of another molecule as an energy source to move molecules against the gradient. So, pumps use the energy directly, hence other primary transporters. Now, moving on the carriers. Well, the carriers are special types of proteins that help transport solutes, such as ions and small molecules across cell membranes. Some carriers transport substrates in a passive manner down concentration gradients. That means solutes move from a region of higher concentration to one of lower concentration. But other carriers use transmembrane ion gradients created by pumps to transport across a membrane up a concentration gradient or the translocation of an ion down its concentration gradient can drive another ion or solute up a concentration gradient. So, these are called secondary transporters. While coming to another class of proteins, that is, channels. Well, channels are like tiny doors in the cell membrane that are passive transporters that allow certain ions to pass through. These channels can open and close in a controlled way. When they are open, they allow a lot of ions to move quickly across the membrane, driven by differences in electrical and chemical energy. This movement of ions through channels helps control the electrical potential across the membrane. This can create rapid electrical signals in cells, like nerve and muscle cells. So, you now have a basic understanding of the three types of transport proteins found in the cell membrane. Well, in this video series, we will concentrate exclusively on membrane pumps, while we will be throwing light on the other two types in our future videos. So, join us as we explore the fascinating world of membrane pumps and discover how they play a crucial role in keeping our cells functioning properly. Watch our medical videos anytime and anywhere. Download Scotia.com app now.